Well, welcome back for week three celebrating National Craft Month. Let's just get right into our project. This week, we're gonna look at coloring with alcohol markers. Now, there are a lot of them out there. Copics, Olos, Altenew has some. Today, I'm gonna use Olo markers. I have found that I really love working with these and have learned a lot thanks to the wonderful Miss Lori Craig. She's an incredible teacher, and that's where I learned what I'm gonna share with you today. So let's start, first of all, I have stamped our image here. This is a beautiful floral stamp from Sweet and Sassy, I believe. And it's gonna be a lot of fun to color. So let's look at this one. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start with my largest elements, which would be the blossoms. And we're going to start once I get the right color. We are going to start with our darkest shade. So I'm using Olo V 7.6 and I'm going to come in and start with our biggest and I'm just going to go in where you want your deepest color which would be at the center and I'm just going to flick out some color and I'm only going to do three petals at a time because that's going to give me time to work before it completely dries and then I'm going to go on to our next shade, which is, I should show you, V4.3. And we're going to come in and just flick out over that. I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm just kind of coloring it in. And then finally, I'm going to go in with V4.1. And we're gonna take that out and that will blend out our three and you still get some of the striping in there to get some fun detail and texture look to your, to your petals. Now, one thing with using the Olo markers, you'll see that I'm not going to recap them between coloring because that is better to let the air flow on the markers and keep it going. So let's go on and do another petal or two. And you can move your paper around to however you flick best. And you'll notice I went over into that petal. No worries, it'll all clean up by the time we get done. And I happen to be a very quick colorer. I don't spend a lot of time shading and blending. Um, I have found in my style that it works best for me. Um, I'm still in awe of some of the artists out there who can spend their time and make amazingly detailed colored images, but I just kept getting frustrated. So I found what worked for me. So figure out wherever you want those shadows to come in. And we'll just Keep adding layers of color. For me, I found I, it is easiest for me to flick away. So that's why I will keep turning my paper around so that I can keep that motion going the same way. Um, sometimes I switch it up and come toward me, but I'm not always as happy with that. And that's mainly because I get lazy and I don't want to flip my paper. So. There we go. We'll just keep adding. And you can take as much time on coloring as you like. You can get as detailed or as simple as you like. So we're done with that blossom. Very fun shades of purple. And then before we go on to the next blossom, I'm gonna just hop in here with another shades and do some leaves. So let me remember which colors I used. I think I used this, yes, this one on the big leaves. So we're using YG 8.5 and YG 8.3. We'll take those off and we'll come in here with those leaves. Now an image like this is nice because they've already added some shading lines in the detail of the stamp. So that makes that easy to follow. 
and easy to color in. There we go. Turn it around and keep going on this leaf. Follow those shading lines they provide. You can always do what your heart feels and add the shading however you want. I personally like when they give me those little bits of detail because I don't have to think so hard about where my light source is coming from. One more turn and we'll get this leaf right back here. Some of the leaves that are more hidden, I like to make them a little darker, so I'll come out further with those dark shades. That'll add depth and, to your image and a little more contrast. There, there we go. All right, we'll stop on that one for a minute and we'll go back to our next flower. And always make sure you're starting with the right shade. Come in from our dark colors again. And keep flicking that color out. And our medium shade. And back in with the lightest. There we go. It's coming together. Let's see again, darkest shade. And again, we've got some dark coming in here, so I'll add a little bit more in these spots where my flowers are meeting up, just to get a little more depth in those areas. the lightest again. There we go. It's coming together. One more flower to go. This particular one, I like they've kind of given some shading on both ends, and so I kind of had a little bit of fun with that, and we'll pull that down. Again, just to give you some fun added depth and interest to your flower. And that last petal over there. There we go. All right, a little bit left, last shade of our lightest. And then I stop and I look and I see all the spots that I missed, like that one right there. There we go. All right, some fun shaded flowers. Now we've got another shade of green that I'm going to bring in. It's Y8.7 and Y8.6. And I'm gonna bring those in on the leaves and the stem of the flower and the leaves on these others. So make sure again that I'm using my darkest. And that's just coming a little bit at the end. And I'm just going to outline just a little bit there to give me some depth. And then on these others, I'm just going to give a little swipe because those leaves are so tiny. So we're just going to give them a little shading at the base of the leaf. And then we'll come in with our other green and fill that out. There we go. Lots of little leaves hiding in there, aren't there? 
I'm going to go back and find them all at the end. Make sure we got everything covered. There. All right. And I did see, see, I missed one leaf over there. So we are going to go back to the YG, there we go, 8.5 and 8.3. Go back and finish this little leaf tucked in over here. don't want him to feel left out. Get him all colored in. There we go. Now, you could end right here, and it would be a gorgeous card, but we're going to add a few little details. So we've got the centers of our flowers. We don't want them to feel left out. So I'm not going to shade. I'm just going to go in with YO 2.3, and I'm just going to tap in some color in there, just to get a little bit in the centers. And then we notice all these fun little buds out here, which who knows what they are. They could be a lot of different flowers. Um, you could leave them as they are and let them go white, but I like to take just a little bit of shadow in WG1, as I'm probably covering that up, um, just to give a little bit of highlight to them. And all I'm gonna do is just do a little quick swatch on them just to bring out a little shadow and give it a little something something. There, I think we got them all done. So there is our finished blossom image. Now we could zhuzh that up and come up with our final card. So here is what I did with that. I'll just move this one over and let's bring in, there is our final card. A little bit of texture, a little bit of die cutting, and you have a beautiful floral image to send to a friend and say hello. So thanks for crafting along with me today here um, as we celebrate National Craft Month. I hope you guys have a great day and give it a try yourself. Color with some alcohol markers and unleash your creativity. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.